So I'm Elliot, Chris, and we are the Extrapolation Factory. Um, and we like to think about the future. And it turns out that a lot of people think about the future. Uh, people think about what they're going to have for dinner tonight. Maybe whether they're going to bring an umbrella out tomorrow. Um, all and, sorts of things. And um, so the culture, like we were actually interested in like where's the culture of thinking about the future coming from. And this is an image uh, showing a bunch of physicists uh, at Rand Corporation um, thinking about blast radius and like the worst, worst, worst scenarios that could come. So we've started to put together a, a method for thinking about the future. Um, and developing this method as a way to democratize futuring, as opposed to some of the RAND Corporation thinking, where it's really experts who are doing the futuring, and then also to contextualize futuring. So putting the futuring into the hands of others. And, and uh, go, go ahead. And this is um, an image in downtown Brooklyn next to a Metropolitan Exchange. OK, there is um, um, an array of products. So, and we, these are all real products. And somehow, we were really interested in the weird values or needs that are addressed here. So the 99 cent store is kind of a ubiquitous scene in downtown Brooklyn, um, where our studio is located. And, we really like the way the 99 cent store becomes a focus point for all of these strange needs and value sets that, that you saw in the last slide, um, where all sorts of things come together, things that we may not think that we need. Um, what you see here is what we call the time slice. Uh, so is, when you walk through the 99 cent store, you can find something as ageless as a box of toothpicks, um, all the way up to an iPhone 5 case of present day, and then everything in between. So maybe you need to label your VHS, You've got that in the 99 cent store. So we developed a workshop for people to come and uh, do futuring with us. So we, it was a participatory workshop, and we developed this step-by-step uh, um, -step process to actually enable um, anyone and democratize actually a way of thinking about the future. So this, this process has got four steps. We start out by presenting a series of forecasts that have been made by various experts. Uh, and each forecast kind of says, this might happen in the future. For example, in 2035, every South Korean home will have a, a robot in it. Um, so people would take these forecasts, rip them off, just kind of like a um, telephone pole, bring them over to the next step, which is a, a way for people to interpret these futures, these forecasts. They would pin them into one of five lenses, and that would be a way for them to start to rationalize what this forecast means, decide whether it makes sense for them in their lives. So, uh, so this is a close-up of um, the wall that we had, and this is also the process for the story generation. So what you see here, like there is one lens, for example, that's the econom economic lens, that's actually in the step two. And in step three, like once you pinned up those lenses and like, created these focal points for your story, you create a story. And this is uh, the workshop in action, people um, actually using some of um, the product templates that you see on the far right that we had prepared and some of the productization station that we have there where you can hack existing 99 cent uh, products and combine them with crafting materials. And what people came up with was basically this range of products that sort of presented like various values and like ideas about and perspectives about the futures in all sorts of different ways. Yeah, so in the, in the course of maybe two or three hours, people went from walking in this room with, with nothing uh, particular on their minds to coming out having actually fabricated a 99 cent product of the future. So here's an example. This is the Perform Air. And the idea here is that maybe in the future we're all driving self-driving cars, um, but all these cars also have breathalyzers built into them. And so there's this new social culture where we don't accept drunk driving, but maybe we still do it anyway. And so this device might help you to kind of navigate these social cultures. And trick your car. And this is, a, well, let's go through the products. This is a currency converter checking, um, like, in a, in a future where alternative uh, currencies like Cocoa would come up. This is a, well, 
Okay, now we're on the next slide. <laughs> so, yeah, so we took all these products that were developed in this workshop and essentially mass produced them. This is where it starts to become the kind of uh, factory side of the extrapolation factory. We made um, fictional name badges and um, made hundreds of these products, went back to the 99 cent stores and actually repurchased all these things that constituted the, the products that were made in the workshop. And um, what was uh, an interesting experience for us was the relationship building with the store and sort of um, also creating a value for them, um, not just that we sold the products there, but also sort of like really building a friendship in a way where we came in and, and helped them. Um, well, this is actually the transformed storefront from the night of the opening. And what we tried to do is basically create this experience, sort of a suspension of disbelief, sort of invite not just people that would come to a gallery opening, but invite anyone from the street to come and join and like see yeah. those things. So in this slide, you can actually see, there were some people who were the invited guests that we, we uh, brought along to this fictional storefront for an evening. There were also people who were the regulars who would just walk into this store. And as people walked through, there was this surreal feeling where you'd walk by and you'd see some object that, that you might know is true. And you'd see another one that you really weren't sure about. So here, for example, is a benzene vapor refill that might remind you of the days when you would pump gas into your car. Now that you're driving an electric vehicle, and everybody is, nobody has that experience anymore. Um, and so where do we sit in this world of um, you know, manufacturing, we kind of see ourselves manufacturing in a, a slightly different way. So we'll let you interpret this how you want, but here's the Navy Yards in its heyday, crossed with Coney Island. So Rem Koolhaas talks about Coney Island as this world for imagining futures. Maybe we sit somewhere around there. Anyway, so thank you very much. Thanks.